troubleshooting windows, stop errors, the blue screen of death. As the name implies, the blue screen of death is something no Windows user ever wants to see. And it's generally given that name because once it happens, it's rather difficult to troubleshoot. That being said, there are several steps we can take to avoid and to help recover from a blue screen of death. So we're going to cover stop errors in general, also known as BSOD or the blue screen of death. We'll look at some of the reasons for these improper shutdowns that can cause uh, the stop error or blue screen of death other than just a hardware malfunction as well. Then we'll talk about troubleshooting these improper shutdowns, including checking the event viewer, using msconfig, one of our favorite tools, booting into safe mode via the uh, advanced boot options menu, pressing F8, running a vi virus scan program, something not built into Windows but highly recommended, checking the power source, and finally, if nothing else works, restoring or recovering Windows. Finally, we'll just look at error reporting, something that happens with less intense, less difficult to recover from errors. So first, a stop error, otherwise known as the blue screen of death or BSOD. And yes, you will see this term on the a exam. What happens is it displays a blue screen with a lot of text and some code, including memory addresses, etc maybe even a file name. Generally speaking, this completely halts the operating system, and if you get to this point, all the page you've just been working on is now lost. Now, sometimes it can be caused by a specific file, in which case you can Google for the issue, but uh, no matter what happens, if you haven't backed up recently, uh, the file you were just working on is definitely gone, and hopefully nothing else is gone as well. This may be a one-time event, so it might just have happened because uh, you know the planets aligned in a in a bad way. Certain operating, a certain software was running all at once, or this could be the result of bad memory, bad drivers, some hardware gone bad, etc. So the first thing to do is to check the event viewer, the system log specifically, and the dump file upon reboot. Now, what the dump file is is set in the settings for what happens when these occur. Remember when we went to the paging file, we went to system properties, the advanced tab, and then we went here to set virtual memory or the paging file. At the bottom there's an area called startup and recovery. And in there, under settings, uh, we can get to what happens when there's a stop error. The dump file dumps the contents of the RAM into this file, and that way you can look at it to troubleshoot. Now, as I mentioned, you can alter what happens when a stop error occurs through this system properties in advanced place. So right here in the system root, which means uh, C Windows System 32, for instance, the memory.dump file is sitting there, and all the information, the kernel memory dump, is there. So you could go and see what happened at the time the, in the memory uh, when this stop error occurred. Now, improper shutdowns can occur for a variety of reasons. Uh, brownouts or blackouts from unclean power or from a power outage. Perhaps there's even a power surge that occurs after a power outage. Of course, hardware failure in addition to software failure. Of course, and the user can inadvertently unplug the computer, which happens more often than you'd think. Finally, the virus, a virus or other malware, bad software that got on the computer can cause an improper shutdown. So the first thing we want to do is check the event viewer. They're always going to appear in the system log. Any problems, okay? You want to check for any alerts about hardware failures, service failures, etc. I would look for warnings, but specifically you want to look for errors. And remember those are the red ones. Okay, an exclamation point in a red circle. You may need to upgrade the driver for the affected uh, hardware if that's the problem. And you may also need to upgrade the software if the service is, uh, if there's like a, a service that keeps failing, you might need to upgrade the software that is uh, relying on that service. If the computer is running the latest 
service pack and patches, then you wouldn't need to deal with that. But in some cases, upgrading Windows uh, to the latest version um, or using Windows Update to do so can really uh, help solve some very basic problems. Next, we can use msconfig to weed out any third-party program issues. The easiest way to do that is on the Services tab. Select the Hide All Microsoft Services. Now, if it's a Microsoft service, that means it's built into Windows, and therefore, it's probably going to be a little more intense. Before we get to that, um, we probably want to uh, make sure that it's not a third-party program uh, before we start troubleshooting Windows itself. And so selecting this box, de disabling all of them, and then restarting the computer can really help you. So restart, see if the problem returns. If it does, that might, you know, the issue is something Microsoft related or doesn't have to do with the services. If it doesn't return, then you can start to check one of these on individually, each one, and see when you start to get the problem by process of elimination. Next, we can boot into safe mode. You'll always know you're in safe mode, by the way, because it'll say safe mode on the sides here. Remember, safe mode only uses the most basic drivers and the most limited resources to accomplish uh, booting into the operating system. So it's a really good utility to use for uh, troubleshooting. If you have a driver issue, this could help you find out about it because again, it's only gonna load the most basic drivers. Now you might have a virus, pro you might have a, a problem with a virus on your computer, and if so, running a scan for malware and quarantining anything unusual, anything that the virus scan program has, can certainly help fix the problem. Now, one thing you have to be sure of is to update the AV software using the these are sometimes called DAT files before and after you're finished. Basically, the virus scan program provides the mechanism for removing viruses. However, you need to have the data files for the virus program to look for. If it doesn't know what files it's looking for that are bad, then it's not really going to help you out. You also may need to run it in safe mode, because if the virus is running while you're scanning, then you're probably not going to be able to locate it. So booting into safe mode gives you a better chance of not loading the virus up, and so the virus scan program can find it. The other thing is the virus scan program might not work correctly if you installed it onto your system once the system was already infected. In this case, you'd probably want to go onto a online uh, site such as Trend. I know Trend Micro, for instance, has something called House Call, and it will scan your computer from the web. This way, you can be a little more sure that the virus scan program scanning your computer is not infected. You also make sure that it's completely up to date this way. You also want to make sure that the AC outlet is wired properly and supplying clean power. If your computer is very intermittently shutting on and off, this could be because there's something wrong with the power supply. Verify that the power plug is firmly secured to the computer. If necessary, you might even want to check the power supply. The reason you might know something's a power supply issue, by the way, is if you're getting intermittent and unexplainable shutdowns. Uh, anything that sort of doesn't have a pattern can generally be attributed to some sort of hardware failure. Finally, your last option, if you have continued stop errors, continued blue screen of deaths that you cannot figure out, you can't troubleshoot, then your last option is to stop troubleshooting and simply try fixing. This is using the system recovery option, uh, which can restore your system files from a restore point or reinstalling Windows over the current installation, therefore resetting your system files. Now, one thing to note is if you have a virus, this isn't going to help you much. And so the only way to completely remove a virus from the system is to reformat the computer. You want to do this, by the way, from the installation DVD. You can also do it from a utility within Windows, um, but if you're having an error on Windows, then reinstalling from within Windows might bring over the same issue you've already been having. Now, if you're having less serious errors, they might display as a pop-up window like this, which says the system has just recovered from a serious error. It then gives you an option to send or not send the error to Microsoft. Usually, the operating system will continue to function. Uh, the application you were using might close, but the operating system will continue to function. 
You can also find out more information in the event viewer about it, and you can have it search the internet by clicking that click here button. That'll take you out to the internet and give you some more information, if there is any, in the Microsoft knowledge base. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it's worth checking. You can also send that error report to Microsoft, as I mentioned, and sometimes they'll be able to give you a fix, but more than likely this is to help Microsoft make their product better. You can alter how error reporting works, either by going to the Problem Reports section of Vista XP, or in Windows 7 going to the uh, Action Center and choosing the Problem Reporting Settings. So we just talked about stop errors, otherwise known as BSOT. I want you to remember that term because it stands for blue screen of death. And I see this on the exam all the time. Then for troubleshooting improper shutdowns, we looked at checking the event viewer, specifically the system log, using MS config, removing all the Microsoft services from the list and disabling those. Booting into safe mode, you can do this by pressing F8, don't forget. Running a virus scan, you want to do this in uh, uh, safe mode. The other thing is you always want to disable system restore before you remove a virus. We've mentioned that because you don't want the virus hiding out in the system restore. Check the power if you're having intermittent problems specifically. And finally, if you don't have any other options, as a last resort, you can restore or do a uh, recovery installation of Windows. Finally, error reporting is going to have you send information to Microsoft if you so wish. Great. So now let's finish up uh, our discussion of troubleshooting Windows by looking at some of the command line tools that you have at your disposal, which I see pop up in the exam quite a bit.